Bonjour à tous, merci à tous d'être venus après, après la pause. Bonne digestion à tout le monde. L'idée de cette heure qu'on va passer ensemble, c'est un petit peu de vous montrer les différentes menaces cyber au sens très très large du terme. Vous allez voir ce qui est possible de faire, ce qui existe actuellement. Je vais vous montrer plusieurs démos. Oui Ah, yes, sorry, I totally forgot. So, I, I will switch in English, no problem. So, we will do the session in English. And uh, so, the goal of this, uh, of this hour will be to, to see all the different uh, cyber threats uh, possible, what is already uh, in place, what is used by government, what is used by different services all over the world, and especially uh, against uh, journalists. So the, the first thing we will see is the definition of uh, OPSEC, which means uh, Operation Security. Uh, then we will see the security basics. So before anything, before talking about security or we protect things and etc., I want to uh, define the vocabulary, I want to define uh, different notion. Then we will talk about uh, cyber threat and I will do some, some demonstration. Uh, we will see what is a digital footprint and why you should protect your digital footprint. Then we will switch to something fun but sometimes a little bit scary. Uh, Geoint, which means uh, geospatial intelligence. And uh, I didn't find uh, the correct word, uh, wor uh, word uh, in, in English, so this is French, uh, démarquage, which means uh, basically uh, it's uh, creating a different identity. And uh, the last thing we will see is uh, virtual isolation. So as you see, we have a lot of things to cover. And so let's start. The first thing we will see is OPSEC. Uh, this is something I will re repeat a lot. Uh, OPSEC means uh, Operation Security. Operation Security is super, super important when you will, uh, when you you will work on, a, on a, an investigation uh, in order to cover your traces and in order to protect yourself uh, from your potential uh, opponent. So what OPSEC means? OPSEC is a process of, pro of protecting individual pieces of information. And all this piece of information, uh, if you gather this piece of information together, you will have the full picture of who you are. And you will see that uh, during, I mean, during, uh, your investigation when you today you uh, you give a lot of small piece of information and if an opponent want to have information on you he will take all piece of, of information also OPSEC is a protection of this critical information and uh, the goal is to minimize uh, the, the traces the data you left you left behind you so you will see some OPSEC fail uh, because I mean it's pretty easy to find some some example. So for example, um, when you start a new job, a lot of people are super exciting. They post their badges on social networks saying, "Yeah, UP, I got a new job. Look at my badge." Why is it an issue? It's an issue because as an attack as an uh, as an attacker if i want to enter into the um, if i want to test the physical security of uh, your company if i want to enter into the building i already have a, uh, an information i know the look of the badge so uh, is it no okay so i have the look of the badge so it's pretty easy to to duplicate this badge. But also, we have another information. This other information is the number here. So basically, for this woman, 
we do have is employee ID. So with only one publication, one post on the social network, she already gave two information uh, which can be used uh, against the company, which can be used against her. Another example is this guy. This guy is, let's say, a jet setter. Uh, he likes to do party. He is, uh, so he was in the, the Cannes Festival, and he posted something on LinkedIn saying, OK, thank you, uh, Festival de Cannes. It was great. Uh, we do have a lot of party. Uh, I'm, I'm going back uh, to, to Paris. With only this publication on social networks, we do have a lot of information. And we can, we can uh, guess at what time this guy arrived in Paris with only this publication. Because if we are looking carefully, we can see, uh, for example, the, the number of the plane. So we have the immatriculation number of the plane. We can take uh, all the previous, uh, all the previous uh, trip of the, of the plane. In the text, we have, uh, we have the information that he was at the Cannes Festival. If you just Google Cannes Festival dates, you will see that uh, the, the, the Cannes Festival uh, closed uh, in uh, May uh, 28. And so we can say, OK, we are looking for the previous flight around uh, May 28 of this particular plane. And we know that the final destination was Paris. So. Uh, we have the corresponding uh, flight here, the 20, uh, 26 mail. And because right now all the planes, are, we can track all the plane, you can have all the information about this plane and know where he really arrived. Another example is this guy, uh, Marco Rubio, which is a, a US senator, not the clever one. Uh, uh, and this guy was pretty angry because his flight was cancelled, blah, blah, blah. And so he posts these things on Twitter. And the, the big mistake he made is that you have the river, uh, reservation code on the, on the picture. And because, I mean, this is how airlines company are working, uh, you just need you. You can go to the American Airlines website. That is, I mean, it's working for all the airline company. You had the, you had the reservation code, only the his name, and you can modify his reservation. So obviously, uh, like two seconds after his publication, his flight was cancelled, modified, and everything. Another thing, I mean, this story is is more sad. Uh, this guy uh, was a, a PNB rock, was a, a rapper, I mean, pretty famous, apparently, uh, in Los Angeles. And so his girlfriend published on, on Instagram this uh, photo. I mean, if you are used to, to Instagram, you can see that this photo is, is a part, is one photo in a big story with a lot of story. So, I mean, this is just a photo. But because she added the localization, she said, OK, this is this, I mean, Roscoe House of Chicken Waffle. Uh, 20 minutes <coughs> later, uh, three guys uh, came to, the, to this particular restaurant, and the, uh, the rapper was killed uh, during the attack. So just because. <coughs> Just because a girlfriend of this rapper published this, uh, I mean, classic post on, on social network, uh, at the end, uh, the rapper was killed. So this is not really, uh, I mean, it's not a happy conclusion, but the thing is, be really careful when you publish something, because at the end, it can be a question of, uh, uh, of, uh, of life. Uh, if and you can be attacked just because you said, okay, I'm, I'm happy on I am at the restaurant. So, uh, a more funny story. Uh, this guy, 
he's a Russian tourist uh, in Crimea right now. And he was pretty happy to, I mean, this is his holiday uh, photo. He was happy to, to take his photo next to this uh, S400 uh, air defense, uh, which is a very costly uh, military material. And uh, he published this photo on, on VK, the, the, the Russian Facebook. Because some, some, and we will see it later, uh, because uh, he didn't see the problem with this photo. But if you are looking carefully, you can see that we already have some piece of information behind. For example, we can, if you, if you zoom, we can see a, a big building, we can see water, we can, we can, we have some, some clues about where this photo has been taken. And I mean, the location of the S-400 air defense is a, uh, a big deal in a major conflict like uh, the current conflict we have in, in, Uc in Ukraine. So some clever guy managed to find the, uh, the, the exact location and minutes after the they found the location, uh, Ukraine um, sent bombs and uh, I mean destroyed uh, this uh, strategic uh, S-40, S-400 air defense. So the point of this slide is really to show that with only, with uh, I mean classic uh, holiday photo published on the social networks, you can play a role in a, in a major conflict. Next, we have this, we have this video. I mean, there is, there is sound, but I'm not sure it's uh, the more interesting things. And uh, almost every day, uh, some conversation like this are published on social network. Uh, this, for example, this conversation is a conversation between uh, a Russian soldi a soldier and his mother. The, the Russian soldier is in Ukraine and uh, he is talking about the condition uh, of, the, of the war and uh, all the, I mean, his mood and everything. You can see that these kind of things and uh, it was a little bit mentioned uh, yesterday night during the, the uh, uh, Reporters Sans Frontières uh, uh, movie that in right now in Russia, Russia soldiers are, uh, don't know, uh, are pretty bad at OPSEC. So they use their own cell phone uh, in order to call other, other soldiers, in order to call uh, home, and so it's uh, it's a pretty big deal uh, in this kind of conflict because uh, because if you have the, if you have the correct interception e equipment, you can have some critical information. The point here, as a journalist, as a future journalist, in a, in a sometimes uh, critical. Uh, condition in some time in uh, in uh, in complicated uh, complicated country uh, complicated situation you have to take care of everything you have to take care of all the social media publication you are doing you have to take care of the conversation you have because if tomorrow uh, you are going in in Ukraine or in a, in a other country uh, and you will call your birth, your your boyfriend, your girlfriends, your family. This kind of information can be used against you, can be used against your family, and this is not something you want uh, to happen. So before anything, we need to. So okay, we see some some operation security failed. Uh, this is sometimes funny. This is sometimes it's not at all. Uh, but we have to understand what is happening uh, behind. So first, we will define some, some pretty uh, basic concept. Uh, the first one is the threat model. Um, 
I mean, as a 90, uh, as a uh, 30 years old guys, I grew up with Batman, so I took this example. Uh, so what is the threat model of Batman? The threat model, if we have to give a definition, is to understand what are the different threats we have against uh, us. For example, uh, if you are a politician, you don't have the same threat model than uh, a lawyer, for example, or a classic uh, uh, office employee. Uh, and this is totally normal, but you have to define that. And as a journalist, you will have a specific, uh, a specific threat model. As an investigation journalist, you will have another threat model. And uh, depending on, on the story you are working on, you don't have the same opponent. You don't have the same potential attacker. And so the protection you, you will put in place in order to protect your asset will be different. And every time you are working on a different situation, you have to do the evaluation of your threat model. And you have to put the protection in place. Second notion is uh, attack surface. Okay, we define uh, who are our uh, at sorry? Who are our attackant, uh, attackers? Uh, we have to define what is my attack surface uh, in a com in a company, for example. On on this, uh, I mean this picture uh, sum up it uh, pretty well. In a company, you have a different uh, potential. Uh, I mean, you have different potential. Uh, all in your company, and an attacker will be able to to enter into your perimeter, enter into your network by different means. For example, you have IoT device, you have uh, bring your device, uh, you have uh, some office uh, office computer. You can have a, a lot of different connected device, and as a defender, when you want to defend uh, your company, you have to know. Uh, all the devices connected to the internet. And so, if you apply that to you, this is the exact same story. You have to understand uh, what is connected to internet uh, on, uh, in your home, but also what kind of information is available about you on the internet. I mean, do you remember the, the photo you took 10 years ago during a party? Is it on Facebook? Is it still on Facebook? Uh, so do you really know all the information about you on the internet? And you have to, uh, you have to understand that it can be pretty critical. So we are, I'm talking about a lot of things, so let's show some, let's, like what I like to show during my, uh, during my conferences is to show how an attack can happen. I mean, we are talking about a lot of things. We are uh, doing a lot of theory, but let's see uh, the real life. And so the real life is what happened to this guy, uh, Yusuf Al Jamri, which is a Bahraini uh, blogger. Uh, this guy is an activist in, in his country, and he received uh, this uh, particular uh, SMS. So this text message uh, has been received uh, by Yusuf, but if you look at this uh, text message, you will see a, a specific link. And in, the, uh, in reality, in these links, uh, in, uh, when you click uh, on these links, on this link, uh, this link downloaded uh, the Pegasus uh, spyware. So Pegasus has been in the news uh, beginning of uh, this year, I think something like this. Uh, it, it, this is a spyware, an Israeli spyware, spyware made by a company called uh, NSO. And uh, I mean, this is a state of the art uh, because Israelis are pretty good at this. And so the Pegasus malware I is pretty, uh, pretty well done. And so, what you have to understand with this slide is, this is only a, a text message. I mean, when you receive the text message li like this, you can say, okay, pff, yes, sure, text message with a link. It's, uh, I mean, it's only one second to click on it. And if, if you click on it, 
this is uh, the end of the game. The attacker will have everything on your phone. So you have to be really careful on everything, every text message, every, uh, every email you will receive. Another thing is uh, QR code. During the pandemic, during the COVID-19, we saw a lot of QR code everywhere. Uh, I mean, you were uh, in the restaurant, uh, nobody gave you the, the menu, you have to flash the QR code. But there is something important here. Uh, you have no idea what this QR code contains. You have absolutely no idea. You have to trust me that this QR code contains uh, a normal page. And if you, for example, if you use, this is my iPhone, and I use my iPhone to flash my own QR code. And if you look at this video, you will see that I never saw the link, uh, the link uh, contained by the QR code. Let's restart. For example, in the notification, I don't have the link. I didn't, I didn't see the link. So I click on the notification and the link was opened automatically. And this is, uh, this is something important you have to understand is uh, you trust something you shouldn't trust and you have no idea what is behind. So QR code is not really a good solution to, I mean, QR code is not a solution to anything. And uh, when you see a QR code, don't flash it. That's, that's simple. Because you don't know what, is, wha what, you have, uh, what you have in the QR code. Another thing, and um, you will see uh, a lot, this is phishing. Phishing is uh, uh, not new at all. This is something we saw for years, but we have to continue uh, to speak about phishing because it, this is super important, and you will we will do a, a demonstration of phishing. Uh, take care. There is some basic advice you can uh, you can uh, you can apply when you receive an email. Check the vocabulary. Check the email, uh, the email address of the sender. Check the look and feel. Uh, this kind of basic, uh, basic advice. So you, your turn. What is the difference between these two addresses? Are you able to find the difference between these two things? Yeah. Which? Yes. So. One of the A is different here because this is uh, uh, Cyrillic A, and so it's not the same alphabet. And you have no idea, you cannot see the difference between the two. And one of the Amazon.com will go to Amazon, but the other one is not really a Amazon, it is Amazon with the Cyrillic A. And because this is very, very close, you cannot see it. But at the end, this is not the same uh, address. And this is what we called uh, typo squatting. And uh, if, for example, if uh, instead of going to Google, you, you're going to uh, Giggle or these kind of things, uh, you will go to another website. Because some clever uh, attackers will uh, purchase all the uh, all the domain close to a very famous domain. For example, I don't know if you go to, uh, uh, you have the A close to the Z. Uh, Z. So some, some if you miss, uh, mistype your, addre uh, your address, you have the, a chance to, to go to this address. So they will purchase this particular domain. So a small demo, uh, a small phishing, de uh, phishing demo. So, what you have to understand too is the profile of your attackant, uh, of your attacker. Uh, right now, uh, the cyber crime criminal um, are professionals. So this is not just uh, a script, what we call the script kiddie. Uh, this is not uh, a, 
a young young guy uh, in his mother's basement uh, doing that uh, all the day uh, in the dark. Uh, we have some professionals we, which are using the same tools than the Defender. They do have money, they uh, earn a lot of money, and they automatize a lot of things. So it's a pretty small effort for them to attack you. For example, uh, these things, that feature allow you to, uh, to, to create uh, a phishing page uh, pretty easily. You just, have, you just have to type the number of the services you want to, f uh, to, you want to, uh, you want to copy, and I you type the number, and it will create for you the corresponding lo lo log uh, logging page. For example, for the next demo, I use uh, LinkedIn. And this is the login uh, page of LinkedIn. But if you look at the page of the, uh, at the address, this is not LinkedIn. So at I typed my uh, credential in it. And you will see what, what happened. I sign in. And so at the end, I am on LinkedIn. And if you look at it, uh, victim, you have the victim IP, and you have the account and the password of the, of the victim. But why I have been logged into LinkedIn? Because I was already linked, uh, I was already logged in my browser. So first, I am on the attacker website. So I'm not logged in the attacker website. But I gave my credential to the, to the attacker, click on login, and the attacker redirect me to the real LinkedIn. And because I was alre already logged in, this is transparent for me. So you saw nothing. Uh, you click, you receive a, a link on an on email, on a SMS, whatever. You click on it, you, pu you put your credential in it, you are logged in. Okay, this is a normal day. You didn't see anything, and you have been hacked like this. And this is what happened in a lot of situations, and uh, a lot of the, the biggest hack we, we saw in, in the news recently uh, happened like this. So I, I wanted to talk to uh, of that. Uh, so we don't have a lot of time, so I will be pretty quick. Uh, I just want to show a small demo of this uh, particular uh, vulnerability because this vulnerability was pretty fun. In order to be infected, the attacker just have to send you a Word document. You just have to download a docx document. You don't have to open it. Just having it on your computer, you are infected. You, you have to do nothing. And on the, the, so in this first, you you open it. But the second, the second thing is, you just you go to your file browser. You look at the docx document, and you are infected. You did nothing. You didn't open the document. You didn't enable the macro and or whatever. You, you just see it on your file browser. And this is the, the goal of this slide is to show you the level of sophistication uh, the, the potential attacker will have against you. Only uh, so you have, again, you have to be careful of everything, every link, every text message, every email, every document. Uh, you will potentially open download on on your computer. Next, I wanted to show you a small uh, gadget. So, I do have something which which is called uh, a bash bunny. So this is this thing, and this small thing is 
a USB key, and uh, this USB key uh, is very uh, is a very conven convenient tool uh, for an, uh, an hacker. For example, uh, one of my colleagues uh, went to a bank, and uh, he, went, uh, he went to a bank and uh, and uh, with the correct suite and, and say, oh, uh, good morning, uh, I am from the technical assistant. Uh, I need to do a small operation on your computer. Uh, can you give me five minutes? Uh, it will be pretty quick. Uh, if you want, you can, uh, you can call uh, the technical operation center. I'm coming from, the, from, from them, no problem. The lady uh, in the desk, in the desk uh, say, okay, no problem, I will take my coffee. This is my, my coffee break, no problem. Uh, take my chair. So he just plug this small USB key. He, during five minutes, he do nothing on the computer and everything will be executed in, in seconds by this, this key. So for example, So you just have to plug the key, and for example, this computer is locked, and on and, and this locked computer, this key will unlock the computer. So you have to do nothing. For example, I, I will give you another example. I, I was, uh, beginning of this week, uh, I was in the office of La Depeche, which is a, a big, uh, uh, a big newspaper in uh, in Toulouse, and uh, we visited all the offices and everything. And uh, I found an uh, unlocked uh, computer, and I mean it. I it was pretty easy for me to just plug this USB key and be in in their network. So you have to be careful, and also it's a question of education uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to to company at the at the global to say okay, everyone, you have to be careful. You have to lock your computer all the time. The second gadget is this thing. So this thing is a cable, nothing surprising, but. In reality, in this part of the cable, you have uh, you have some intelligence. Let's say it like this, and you will be able to execute some automated uh, script in order to to hack uh, a computer. So, for example, for example, you plugged your phone to the to the corresponding cable, and the the phone will download automatically uh, um, an application. This application will be downloaded on the phone, and you will have a foot inside the phone. And you saw nothing. I mean, it's pretty easy, pretty quick. Uh, I mean, it's, it, it took like third, uh, 12 seconds, something like this. So, I mean, 12 seconds is, is almost nothing. So when you plug your your phone in another in a cable which is not your cable, you are taking a risk. And what I want to to show you is these small things you used to do: open email, open SMS, uh, open uh, docx, uh, plug your phone to a cable, can be the beginning of the end can be uh, for you uh, the can, can the, the entry point for an attacker and tomorrow uh, if you are working on sen on sensitive topics it can be uh, it can have a lot of consequences okay uh, so uh, I want to talk about uh, my favorite topic so the digital footprint. The digital footprint, so let's start by the definition. Uh, every time you are on the internet, you left some information. Sometimes it's an active information. Uh, it's, uh, it's you are doing, doing it uh, actively. So 
I'm taking my phone, posting a selfie, saying, okay, I am at Les Assises du Journalisme in Bruxelles, and so I will give an information to my followers saying, okay, Baptiste Robert is at Les Assises du Journalisme, at Bruxelles, at this time, and this is big information. I'm giving my localization uh, actively. But there is also another way. Uh, all the social networks, all the applications, all the websites you are using collect information for different purposes. For example, when you tweet something, you have to realize that uh, more than uh, more than 200 information are sent with your tweet. This is what we called metadata. And for example, uh, for example, uh, in a WhatsApp message, you have the content of the message, okay? But you also have a lot of metadata. Uh, Baptiste, at this time, from this location, sent to his mother, uh, which was at this time, at which reads l the messages at this time and which has this battery level and everything, everything. So just one small action is giving a lot of information. You probably know this do documentary and uh, the guys are behind this documentary, they are, they are doing a pretty good job. So if you didn't see, um, uh, if you don't see, uh, I mean, if you never saw this, uh, this documentary, uh, it's a, it's a good call. What I want to show you is what I'm doing at uh, Predi Predicta Lab. So Predicta Lab is a company I created uh, three, uh, less than three years ago. And we created a, plat a OSINT platform. Uh, OSINT is for open source intelligence um, with only one identifier, which, which can be a name. Um, a name, a phone number, an email, uh, a pseudonym, we can get all the digital footprint of someone. And so, for example, if I'm looking for Baptiste Robert, so for me, I will have a lot of information from all the Baptiste Robert on the internet, and I can select which information is uh, available, which information is useful uh, for me. So if I'm doing an investigation on someone else, I can get, I can have some if some pretty useful information on, and I can uh, move on on my uh, on my investigation. At the end, we will have something like this, so we will be able to analyze with different views uh, the digital footprint of someone. So you will have all his posts on social networks. You will know when this guy is uh, publishing on social network. You will have all the location he, g he gave on social network, all the, the photos, the, movie, uh, the, the videos he published, everything uh, which can be very useful, all the article he was mentioned to. Next, we can, when you cover, for example, a protest, which happens a lot in front. Uh, it can be really useful to know what are the what uh, posts on social networks are made in a particular location. So, for example, here I search around uh, Lac de Triomphe in Paris, and I was able to get posts from YouTube, Snapchat, uh, VK. Uh, Flickr, Twitter too, and you are able to say, okay, at this time, this guy published a post on social networks. So just by your localization, just by using social networks, you are, you are giving information uh, to your attacker. Another thing is you have a lot of open camera on social, on, on the internet. And so if you, uh, what we did at Predicta Lab is we took all the open camera available on the internet and localized all these camera and put it on, on the map. So all these connected devices you have around you can, can give information on you because, I mean, if I manage to get 
the camera of the building, I will see you on the, on the images. Uh, next, uh, I want to talk about GeoInt, and this is something, as a journalist, you will probably do a lot. This is something pretty new for journalism, but is something, uh, I mean, very trendy. Uh, GeoInt is for geo, uh, geospatial intelligence. Um, what is geolocation? Geolocation is the the you will identify the location of uh, digital information. Digital information is basically an image or, or a video posted on, on social network. Uh, it can be very useful to verify the information. And uh, sometimes it's uh, all the only way to verify the information. So for example, uh, you have to when you are doing geolocation, you have to to look at the picture. You have to look at the video and to understand what you have, uh, what you, are, you what you have in front of you. Uh, we will do uh, one example together, and you will see that it can be uh, a little bit challenging. So reverse image searching. Uh, you have some tools available for that. Uh, Yandex image search, Google image search, uh, search Bing image search which allow you to give to the search engine a photo and uh, it, would, it will give you some, some uh, close uh, picture. So let's take an example. Uh, beginning of, uh, in March uh, 2021, um, there some protests happened in Senegal and I will give you, I will show you a small video of, uh, of this protest. Okay, so you are a journalist, you are working for a newspaper, and your boss is giving you this tweet and saying, okay, write an article on, on this particular event. What are you doing? So the first thing we will do is to do um, uh, this kind of thing in order to have a biggest view. Uh, you will create a par uh, panorama in order to have a bigger, uh, biggest, uh, largest view on the situation and try to find some landmarks, find, find some specific things uh, which will allow you to recognize uh, the place. For example, this building is specific. I mean, this is a big uh, gray building with some specific window. You have another one here, um, and the biggest thing we can see on this image is this police car. This is a pretty, uh, this is a pretty specific police car because we can see some color, so we can guess that this is a, this is probably in Senegal because this is a Senegal color. Something is written. Something is written on, on the car. This, so this is a police car. This something is written, and we have the color of the country. So if we are doing a reverse image search on this particular picture, we will have this. We will find this article. On this article, which is a, an old, older article, um, which uh, is giving us another information. So we have the Sea Gulf Sud. Sea Gulf Sud is a localization on the, um, uh, in, uh, in, in Senegal, so you just have to put uh, this on, on Google Maps and search the specific location. So you manage to narrow down a little bit the area of search, and then you have to understand what we are looking for. So if we come back to the video, we 
can see something super specific. The road is pretty small comparing to, to the rest of the, uh, of the, I don't know how to say it in English, the trottoir. Sidewalk, yes. And uh, something we can see also is we have some pretty, how can I say that? Uh, it's not really, um, we have big buildings behind, but this area seems like to be a, a market or something like this. We don't know, but the thing we can see is that this is lower than the building uh, next to this. So we, we search on Google Maps, and at the end, we manage in a few minutes to find the corresponding location. Okay, interesting. So you were able to verify that this video happened at this time uh, in, in Senegal, in, in this particular place. But what you have to understand when you do uh, GeoInt, when you manage to find the localization of a video is, let's come back to the video. If you look at the video, you have something which is, uh, this person is filming like this. She is not moving. And if you look where she is, she is on the floor of an, of an house. She is probably in her house. So if you find the localization of the event, you also give the localization of the person who took the film. And this is, uh, it can be a critical information because in a country, in a not very democratic country, you also give the localization of someone who film a situation which, uh, um, which is not a good situation for the government and you will give his location. So think about this when you will report ab about this kind of event. Uh, and this is something we saw a lot of in Ukraine too. Uh, a lot of people right now are playing with that. Uh, I mean, finding the localization of video, finding the localization of image is pretty fun, pretty sexy. You are pretty excited to find, okay, I managed to find the location. But think about the fact that behind this nice game, there is some individuals on the complicated area, and sometimes giving the location can have some very, very critical consequences. So, as I said, uh, not, a, not an English word. So demarcage is a, uh, a way to create another identity. So as a journalist, you will have to be really careful in, uh, in what you are doing. So the goal of uh, demarcage is to create another you with another identity. Uh, another story, another age, uh, another gender, which is not using the same social network, which is not using the same computer, which is not using the same network. Something very, very different. For example, and this is something which has been mentioned in, in previous conferences, uh, let's say I'm doing an investigation on, on the French far-right far uh, movement. I will want to create a new identity, a new me, which is an adept, which is for all the far-right ideas. I want to be a pro-Russian guy. I want to be a pro-far-right guy. Uh, and I want to enter into their community, community. But I don't want to mix my personal accounts. I don't want to have consequences on my real life. I don't want these guys to find my wife, to find my kids, to find my mother, my father. And so I do have to create a sep separate identity. But as you see before, uh, you need to be extremely careful on everything. So you need to have a different device, different hardware, different everything for your investigation. And so 
first the work station uh, i i mean i listen to a lot of conferences today and i really understand that sometimes you don't have the budget uh, when you are doing the, your journalist work and so the best situation is to use another computer for your investigation for a specific investigation you have to use a different computer dedicated to this and when i said dedicated to this is not okay let's look at my facebook at the same time no you are you are doing just your investigation on this computer there is other solution on, on the solution which is a, a cheap the cheap solution is a virtual isolation so basically virtual isolation means we will um, we will run what we call the virtual machine it's like having a computer on a computer uh, in a separate environment and you will be able to do a lot of stuff in, in this isolated environment for the network so uh, time is running so i will i will be pretty quick but there is different type of network the best situation is what we call air gapped so we are you are using a very different network not connected to everything only used for your investigation then you have the segmented uh, semantic segmented network on on the situation you should uh you sh i mean the, the thing you will probably do a lot uh in your in your career will be to use a, a vpn uh vpn is um a secure t uh tunnel on the internet so you will not uh how can i say that you will have uh your ip your public ip which is i mean for example you are working from here so this building has a public ip but when you will use a, a, a vpn a vpn you will have another public ip which can be in a different country a uh, different place and uh, it's allow you to be uh, a little bit more uh, anonymous for the browser you have also uh, for your investigation to use a very specific uh, a very different browser this browser should be used only for your investigation and you should be able to uh, do a difference between these two and for example you can customize it in order to recognize it uh, easily there is a lot of extensions and you should have this extension installed uh, for example so we don't have to to go through everything but uh, decentralized is a is a nice extension you have clear url cookie quick manager these kind of things i'm i'm going pretty quick but it's allow you to remove all the cookie uh, remove the ads uh, for example this one allow you to uh, ar archive a, a page pretty easily to check if a page has been archived by something else someone else uh, you have different services you can use uh, vpn for example so Pro proton vpn is a good one uh, proton may uh, uh, gmx is pretty fine to to do uh, to have a burner email so if you don't want to use your own email address so you can use these kind of things to to have uh, one dedicated email address this thing is uh, an alias so you will be able to create an alias on your email address so like this you're saying i don't know you will have something completely random but it will be re redirected to your email address and when you don't need it anymore you can deactivate this alias and you will receive nothing in the previous talk uh, they discussed about password manager i mean there is a lot of password manager this one is open source it's free on your computer so it's pretty uh, convenient to use cell number uh, be really careful with your phone when you think about it uh, what are the what are the way to identify someone what what are the numbers uh, to identify you and a phone number is a thing you don't change a lot i mean maybe 
every 10 years, every 20 years, you change your phone number. But if I have a phone number, it's a good idea on you. So when you are doing an investigation, again, uh, you can create a new phone number. Uh, On-off is a solution. It's a French solution. Uh, you will be able to buy a new phone number uh, virtually, so you don't have to have a lot of uh, SIM card on, on everything. Uh, th we don't have the time, but uh, Tor is a way to access the dark web. Uh, Veracrypt allows you to create some uh, encrypted storage, and uh, it can be really useful when you will discuss with sources, when you will transfer some uh, some document, uh, you always, always, always have to encrypt the partition, the USB key you will give to, to someone. And this thing is a firewall uh, installed on your computer, so like this you will be able to observe what communication, what request your computer is doing to the outside. Last thing I wanted to show you is uh, what we called sock puppets. So I talk about the fact to create a new identity. A new identity on the internet is right now the fact to create a new social, uh, so a new account on, on social networks. And for example, this young lady, Lena Young, doesn't exist. This is me. And Lena Young is not even a real person, I mean. This face doesn't exist. And Lena Young is, has a story. She has, uh, I think, uh, 24 years old, something like this. She is a, a, a student in Toulouse. Uh, she is from uh, the US, I think. I created, I created a story uh, to Lena. And Lena has a, a lot of media accounts, uh, social media accounts. Uh, she is publishing post and I mean she has a real life but she's pretty useful when I want to do an investigation on particular topics and you can you can do it too and you have to do to do it for example you have some website which give you uh, automatically uh, the biography of someone uh, a fake someone so you will have a uh, I mean, the identity of someone who doesn't exist. Uh, you can, on this website, which is quite famous, uh, this person doesn't exist, you will be able to generate some faces with artificial intelligence, and these faces doesn't exist. But because this thing is pretty famous, you can recognize it pretty easily. For example, the eyes are at the same level. And because we want to, to, to go a little bit further, we will try to, uh, to do something different. So I generated a face, and this person doesn't exist, and I went to this website. This website is called remove.bg, uh, and the goal is to remove the background of an image. So I took my, f my face, removed the background, I also go to the, this website, unsplash.com, find, I found uh, the picture of this guy. I mean, this guy was looking at the camera. He was pretty similar to my, uh, this uh, person doesn't exist image. And I try to mix the two, the two photos. So I wanted to, uh, I wanted to put the face of my guy to this, to this guy. So at the end, I managed to create the, ima the image of someone who doesn't exist at all. He doesn't have the eyes at the same l at the same level. I will crop the photo in order to to have only his face. I can do the operation multiple times in order to to have the same guy, the, the same guy in different situation, and I can create a story on this guy. So I will stop here. I, I do have a lot of slides, so I will stop here. And if you want to, to ask questions, this is the time. Thank you very much.
Um, you used a, a website uh, on which you could see all the activity, all the online activity on a specific place. Is that something we can use? Because that could be quite useful in order to, to cover a, a demonstration or something to have more um, material. So, uh, so this website is uh, the OSIN platform we are developing at uh, PredictaLab, uh, my company. And uh, in order to use it right now, you have to be my friend. Uh, uh, Am I not? I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm working with a different uh, journalist. Uh, I mean, because I'm French, I'm more discussing with uh, French uh, journalists right now. But uh, if you have a specific needs and if you are working on, uh, on an investigation, we are always happy to, to collaborate and uh, work with uh, journalists. Yeah. All right, thank you. Are there spe specific brands that you do not recommend, uh, for instance, for laptops or uh, for just phones? So, sorry. Are there specific brands that you absolutely do not recommend to have as a journalist? I I, I don't like to to give this kind of advice because I mean all brands are pretty different and uh, there is uh, good things and bad things. Um, the only things I, I can say is um, security is more uh, a, sta uh, a, state, a state of mind. You have to, and this is what I repeat a lot during this talk, is uh, you have to be really careful on everything you are doing. You have to separate everything from your professional life to your personal life. Uh, for example, in the previous talk, they discussed about um, cyber uh, bullying on, on the social networks, and it's pretty concerning, concerning things because uh, it's touching, uh, touching you as a in your personal life, not as a journalist. And, and uh, uh, let's say you don't want to be uh, bullied by terrorists. You don't want to be bullied by far right movement or le uh, far left movement. And so, if you want to avoid this kind of situation, this kind of super tricky situation, which can lead to, I mean, to your to death sometimes, uh, you really to to think uh, to be paranoid sometimes and to to isolate everything. I, I have a question about um, the websites that we use to transfer data, like we transfer or Swiss transfer. If you can just explain to us how it works and if it's secure or not, uh, especially when we want to like send sensitive projects mainly. That's why I use it, for example. So don't use that for sensitive project. Uh, uh, this is the first thing. Uh, what you have to understand is every bit of data you are uploading uploading on the internet is uploaded on the computer which is not yours which can be uh, analyzed which can be browsed by someone else and if you are working on sup on something super sensitive if you are working on something people doesn't have to see you have to be i mean uh, you have to use a traditional way which is meet the person in real time, uh, in the real life, uh, give him a USB key. You have to discuss without phones in the same room uh, in order to exchange some data. And this is something pretty common right now in some, uh, I mean, in some area to just, uh, I'm taking, uh, to give you an example, I'm, I'm used to take uh, planes like um, I'm probably I'm taking like two or four planes by week right now because it's not because it's really funny to be in an uh, airport but because some people I have to see I have to see uh, in the real life I cannot exchange <coughs> with them uh, by email or by whatever so there is some secure solution of for example uh, secure drop uh, maybe, uh, maybe you know it is a, is a good solution, but uh, the best, best solution is to meet people. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, for the for the presentation. 
Uh, is there a systematic way or is there organization who is working in a systematic way to detect and uh, and disconnect the sub uh, the sub puppet accounts, the dots or everything like this? Because we always have these problems with uh, private platforms like Facebook or Twitter. Uh, they don't have the resources, probably not the interest to invest in doing this. So what you were explaining, if you have good intentions, it's very good to do it, but with bad intentions, obviously, how, how uh, is there any systematic way to, to undo what you just show? So th there is multiple parts in, in, in your question. Uh, hacking in general, uh, sorry? Yes, uh, so, so the mic is, okay. So in general, hacking is, uh, can be used for good or for bad, but the same skills can be used for both. And obviously, uh, creating a sub puppet can be used to, uh, I mean, for uh, a misinformation a campaign to uh, bully someone, but it can be also used uh, to do an investigation when you are a journalist. For the social networks, for the private company, they have no interest at all, but like no interest at all uh, to remove this kind of accounts because more accounts mean more activity, means uh, better, uh, better numbers, and uh, um, uh, yes, ads, publicity, and uh, it's it's better for them. Uh, and also, technically, is it's complicated. <laughs> Let's uh, we can uh, we can give them uh, that. Technically, it's super complicated to detect uh, an account like this because if if you do what what I said previously, if you create a story, if you use the same place, if you are consistent to to your story. I mean, if this guy has the same name the same age, the same story everywhere, if he is connected with the same device from the same place all the time, I mean, what is the difference between him and me? This is a real guy with a real device, and technically they are not able to detect it. So there is a big technical issue, and I don't think they will be able to fix it. This is I think it's a problem without uh, a solution, to be honest. Another question? Uh, thank you. Uh, I think lots of young, younger folks like me uh, in their tenemies, uh we are very active on social media. I have a, a data footprint that is probably uh, huge, because I don't especially uh, pay attention to that. What would be like one advice for young journalists who will soon be in a redaction, uh, will be handling sensitive material, one advice to uh, start securing uh, our uh, numeric identity? So remove what you, what you can remove. Uh, this is a big thing. The first thing you have to do is to uh, to audit your digital footprint. What is available on you on the internet? You have to understand, you have to know what is available on you. This is the first thing. Then you have to remove all the things you can remove and with GDPR and all these things. Right now, there is a lot of ways to to almost disappear from the internet. The next thing is to create a new identity. Uh, you have to lie. You have to lie, and you have to lie. Uh, you have to be smart in your lie, but also you have to change your lie um, uh, periodic, uh, periodically. So I mean, for example, you can use this guy uh, for two weeks, three weeks, one month, and then you will be, for example, Lena Young. And then you will be someone else. And then again, another person. So for your normal daily life, you can have a pseudonym. You can have a sub puppet too in order to protect your identity. So the 
to sum up, the, the advice is to just lie, create a new identity, and repeat this lie uh, periodically. If, do you have another question? I think. Uh, thank you so much. I'm very interested in this idea of creating a, a, a fake identity because actually that's a, a troll's method, so <laughs> um, it's um, kind of funny, but I acknowledge that journalists need to um, to do that. Um, how do you balance the need to uh, so create this new identity to remain uh, anonymous uh, online and to protect yourself and also the need that you need to be trusted by your sources, so they need to know you, and the, the way to be trusted, for instance, if you do investigation, it's because you're well known because of your investigation, so people are going to try to reach out to you, um, to communicate with you about uh, what they do, like if you want to attract whistleblowers, you, you have to be visible, right? Yep. So how, do, how can we manage the, this need to be visible and and all, all what you're suggest. Yeah, you, you can't because this is two different. This is two different things. Uh, for example, I'm taking I'm taking my uh, my situation uh, in my uh, in my sector uh, in cyber cyber security. I do have a lot of people who message me about vulnerabilities in a lot of application website because they trust me and they trust my previous work. So I, I am in this situation, but. In an investigation, um, as I said before, if you are uh, analyzing a far-right movement and these kind of things, you have two situations. The first thing is you, you are dependent of the information people will give you, or you will do your, your investigation, and you will enter into their community. Uh, community. And the second way, uh, be anonymous, trying to create a new identity, trying to uh, enter in the corresponding uh, Facebook group, into the, f uh, the Telegram group, uh, is, uh, I mean, it's like an intelligence uh, work. I mean, intelligence services are doing the same thing. I and you have to, to a journalist has to use the same methods in order to, to find the good information. And if you want to have this good information, you have to do that. You, you are forced to, to do that. But you can, be, you, you can do both. I mean, there is no issue to be famous in your sector, to, uh, to have a lot of message from a lot of people, and at the same time, do, doing this work. This is not incompatible. Yes, but, uh, but this can be uh, a, a kind of ethical problem at, uh, at some point. Like, uh, where do you, uh, when do you stop and when it's becoming easier and easier with this person does not exist or, or whatever to, to impersonate uh, stuff. And then maybe you will have one, uh, a less sensitive uh, case and then are you going to have uh, a fake identity as well? Uh, or not, not just you, but all your uh, our fellow colleagues or, or, or whatever? Wh uh, where's the limit for you? Uh, um, it's, as I said before, it's depend of the threat model. Uh, we don't have the same threat model on, on depending of uh, who is doing the investigation, depending of the the context of the investigation, uh, you will not have the you will not have the same attacker. You will not have the same opponent, and so the threats uh, are different. Sometimes I'm not using uh, fake I identity, but uh, this is my own judgment. Maybe it's not a good judgment, and uh, uh, there is an ethical issue also, but uh, more related to journalism. For example, if I'm uh, studying far-right movement and find something which is not something legal, and I'm doing the same things and uh, intelligence services, uh, same things and police, uh, when I will report that to the police, when I will stop my investigation b because I'm, I'm going too far? Uh, uh, this is a big question, and uh, I don't have the answer, and, uh, uh, we can discuss that uh, hours, I think. Uh, 
I think we have an end. So thank you very much.